Select a topic from the list on the left side of the screen. View all the screens within the chapter and answer test questions at the end to complete the topic. Begin at the top with safety rules and work your way down in order finishing with the chapter on general operation. Unit 4 Machine Controls The machine can turn 360 degrees. Which way is forward and which way is reverse when traveling? How do I shut down the machine in the event of an emergency? What are the functions of the foot pedals located in the front of the operator's seat? What are the functions of all the buttons and switches found on the left and right consoles? And how do I go about monitoring information on the machine's operating condition? Before an operator takes joystick controllers in hand or starts pushing pedals, they need to review and fully understand the other major components of the control system. They consist of the right hand control console to the right of the operator's seat, the menu input pad on the console to the left of the operator's seat, and the electronic menu driven display unit, which is positioned slightly down and ahead of the left console. Working in unison with one another, these components give the operator the ability to control and continuously monitor all functions of the shovel. Left mouse click the right hand control console to view those controls and then view the menu driven system by clicking the input pad followed by the display unit. The operator's right side control console. Please move the mouse cursor over the function buttons, then left click for function descriptions. You must view all controls before advancing. There are several track related variables that can affect traction. They include 1. Track length. The longer the footprint of the track, the greater the likelihood of having improved traction. 2. The width of track shoes also determines the size of the footprint and the resulting degree of traction. The width of track shoes also plays a big role in determining flotation. Machines with extra wide track shoes are able to work on softer ground without sinking in. 3. The type of track shoe affects traction. New shoes with a single grouser bar provide the greatest degree of traction. Shoes with two grouser bars are intended for general purpose use and provide a good balance of traction and maneuverability. 4. Machines used in cold climates usually have ice cleats welded to the grouser. These improve safe use and increase traction on ice and snow surfaces. 5. Wear and condition of track shoes are a major consideration. Only new shoes are going to give maximum traction. The more track shoes wear the less effective they'll be. 6. The configuration and layout of the bottom rollers also affects traction. Hard mounted bottom rollers allow parts of a track to rise up off of uneven ground, whereas rollers that are paired up as movable bogies are able to follow ground contours and allow the entire track to deliver better traction. 7. The condition of sprocket segments, track rail pins, combined with track